Okay, so uh, we're going to continue with projectile motion and do the next uh, scenario. <clears throat> In the next situation for projectile motion, um, okay, is when an object starts at a maximum height. So an example could be if I flick, for example, a ball or a rock from the top of a table, I flick it, so um, this is your maximum height, and the object is only going in this direction. So if you think about it in terms of a parabola, I'm taking half a parabola. Let's say I'm just starting from here. That's half the motion, okay? How would we go about solving it if we only have half of that motion? This is your delta x, okay? So this is my uh, second scenario that we're gonna take a look at. <clears throat> For all projectile motion, the way to do the questions is exactly the same, okay? Um, so this is, uh, let's put it case two, max height to ground, okay? All right, so uh, let's say um, uh, I kick a ball off the edge of a cliff, okay? Let's say, so the, this is your cliff, and let's say this cliff is 100 meters high, so there's my delta y, okay? And I kick the ball, and the ball will now fall below into the valley, let's say, okay? There's your delta x. Um, and let's say the velocity with which we kick this ball is uh, a horizontal velocity of, I don't know, 14 meters per second, okay? So this component of velocity, vix, is 14 meters per second okay now what is the y component of velocity at the top of this motion because it's maximum height what is it zero so the y component of course at the top of this motion is zero okay there is no y component and again i'm going to ask you the same three kinds of questions firstly time of flight okay b range horizontally delta x and c slightly different, which is with what velocity did it, will it hit the ground? So VF, when it hits the ground. VF, when it hits the ground. Okay, um, and again, to uh, solve these situations, we're going to start with the same kind of process and this is what I want to do with projectile motion that I want you to literally just repeat it over and over and over again just understand what scenario we're looking at and then go about solving it okay because the process to solve it is very very similar and if you can do that then you shouldn't have a problem with projectile motion but if you don't understand it then this is where the problem is so my x component of velocity already given 14 meters per second Okay, y component of velocity is zero. Okay, of course, acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is all going in the same direction. So since my velocity is going downward, it can be positive. Acceleration is going downward and it can be positive as well. So both of them are positive. Okay, let's start with time of flight. The formula I'm going to use is exactly the same. V, delta y, which equals to viyt plus half a t squared. Okay, delta y is my 100 meters, which is how high my object was. Now, the y component of velocity at the top of the motion is 0. So, 0 plus half times 9.8 times t squared. So, you get 100 meters, which equals to 4.9 t squared. Okay, 100 divided by 4.9, and then square root the whole thing equals to t. What is your t? What do you get? Four point five seconds. Okay, four point five seconds. Time of flight, four point five seconds. Part A of the question. Part B of the question. Part B of the question says, What is <clears throat> my range? How far away will I land? Where will this ball land? in the valley below. So delta x, which equals to vix times t, 
I was given my delta x, 14 meters per second, times 4.5 seconds. What is your delta x? What do you get? 63 meters. 63 meters. Part B of the question, 63 meters. Okay, so far so good. Now the last part of the question is, what is the velocity with which this object will hit the ground? And for me to find this velocity, I need to understand what I'm looking at. Okay, so now my final velocity when it hits the ground, it's going to be something like this. And therefore, it will have an x and y component. So if this is your vf, this is going to be your vfy, and this is going to be your vfx. Okay, and there's going to be an angle like so. Okay, so when we have a scenario like this or a situation like this, we know that the x component of velocity in my projectile motion never changes. So vix equals to vfx, which equals to 14 meters per second. I don't have to do anything about this. My x component of velocity stays the same. Okay, the y component of velocity, on the other hand, I'll have to solve for it. So to solve for that, I'm going to do the following a equals to vfy minus viy divided by t. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to bring this up. So a times t plus viy, which equals to vfy. Okay, now I know that uh, the maximum height, at maximum height, my viy was 0. So this is 0 plus 9.8 times 4.5. What do you get for your VFY? How much? 44.4 meters per second. 44.4 meters per second. So this is my Y component of velocity. <clears throat> okay. And the next step now after this is to figure out what my uh, final velocity is. And of course, because it's a right angle triangle. We're going to be using Pythagorean theorem to solve for it. Okay? Okay, so my final velocity is going to be Vf squared, which equals to Vfx squared plus Vfy squared. Okay? So Vf, which equals to the square root of, I have the x squared, which is 14 squared plus 44.4 squared. What do you get for your VF? How much? 46.5. So 46.5 meters per second. Of course, now we're going to figure out my angle. So that's going to be tan inverse VFX over VFY. Okay. Tan inverse. VFX, of course, is 14 divided by 44.4. What is your theta? Yes. So we're going to say 18 degrees above the vertical. Now remember what we said, that there are two angles. So either we're going to do this. This is 18 degrees above the vertical. Or we're going to do this, which is how many? 72 degrees below the horizon. So you could write both of those down. It's up to you. Below the horizon. Yeah. Why do we use tan inverse? Because those are the two values that were given to us. And the reason we use them is because um, if you made a mistake in your calculation, then it's possible that you get the wrong answer. Right? So if you use sine or cos, you have to use hypotenuse. But what if you made a mistake in your calculation, your hypotenuse is wrong, your angle is also wrong. But if you use tan inverse, these are the values that were given to you in the question. 
You can't get them wrong. Yeah? Okay, so now remember, just like VI and VF, this is your hypotenuse. This is your hypotenuse. Okay, this is your hypotenuse. It is made up of its component parts. It's made up of its component parts. So to get my VF, I need to find my VFX. I need to find my VFY. I can't just get VF. It's a Pythagorean theorem, right? This is C squared. This is A squared. This is B squared. I have to have A and B for me to figure out my C. Okay? You can't use it any other way. You have to use this process. Cool? So this is uh, our second scenario.